Hey guys, Rav here, back with another Rust guide. Scrap is arguably the most important resource in Rust. It allows you to craft workbenches, which are crucial for progression. It allows you to research items, which is essential for crafting. And it allows you to barter with both NPC traders and players for more items. In this video, I'll be going over the best, fastest, safest and most effective methods of gathering scrap in Rust. From simple methods such as farming roads and the ocean, to more complex methods such as dedicated hemp farms and trout bases. I recommend you watch the entirety of the video to help you decide which method is best for you. As always, if you have any of your own methods or any suggestions for future videos, please let me know down in the comments. Without further ado, let's get into the first and most basic method, the road. A vast network spanning the rust map which connects monuments together. Travelling these roads, we can go from one monument to another. But we're most interested in the junk piles and destructible road signs that spawn along these roads. The destructible road signs can be harvested and will always drop one pipe and one road sign. We should always take these to recycle later. One pipe will yield us 5 scrap and 1 high quality metal, with a road sign yielding us 5 scrap and 2 high quality metal. If we take the value of the high quality metal into account, a destructible road sign will yield us 16 scrap each. Although most profit from the roads will come from the junk piles. There are various types of junk piles all spawning numerous amounts of barrels and crates. When travelling along these roads, we can come across 3 different types of barrels. The first and least important being the oil barrel. This drops between 15 and 19 crude oil as well as 5 to 9 low grade. We can trade the crude for scrap, however it's probably not worth it and we're best refining it into low grade fuel. We're most interested in the other two barrels, which in terms of loot are exactly the same, but with varying health points. The brown barrel has 35 health and the blue has 50. These barrels will always drop 2 scrap when broken and have a 2 in 3 chance to drop some form of component and an additional 1 in 3 chance to drop some form of item or piece of clothing. These are the components a barrel can drop and depending on the item we receive from a barrel we're looking at a worth of 2 to 20 scrap if we're lucky. It's best to farm a barrel with either a metal cleaver, paddle or machete. As well as barrels, junk parts will also sometimes include a lootable crate. This can come in 4 different forms. The first being a food crate which holds little value in terms of scrap. You can sell a few food items such as rad pills for scrap but the amount is so little that it's usually not worth the effort. We're more interested in the other three crates, the most recognisable being the brown crate. This crate will always include 5 scrap and yield some type of component which can be seen on screen now. In addition, brown crates often include other items, basic guns, clothing and electrical equipment. This can be kept or recycled for even more scrap. Depending on our luck, we're looking at a scrap worth of 10 to 100 from a brown crate if all items are recycled. The next crates we can find at junk piles are the red toolboxes. Like brown crates, these will always spawn 5 scrap, but will also spawn some additional items. Mainly tools, weapons, ammo or clothes, but there's about a 6% chance to receive either a targeting computer or a CTV camera, which yields a substantial amount of scrap when recycled. So, in the best case scenario, we can receive a targeting computer, which gives the crate a scrap worth of between 5 and 82. Our next and final crate is the vehicle part toolbox, which will always contain 8 scrap and some car parts, which can always be recycled for a few extra metal frags. The biggest problem with following the roads is that they are frequently travelled by other players, so there is an increased risk in getting into some PvP and potentially dying. For a safer alternative, you can follow the power lines, these also connect monuments together and spawn junk barrels beneath them. However, chunk piles can also be found floating on the ocean, which spawns the same barrels and crates as discussed in the previous segment. It is important to consider the transport required to loot the ocean. Technically, you could swim, but this would be painfully slow. Instead, you must invest in or either find a small boat, rib or kayak. Boats can be notoriously hard to find. Depending on how long you plan to farm the ocean, it could be worth purchasing a rowboat for 125 scrap or a rib for 300 at the fishing village. Or a cheaper but slower solution is to purchase the BP for a kayak and the paddle at the fishing village for a combined total of 75 scrap. So, as long as you have the 75 metal, 200 wood and 50 cloth to construct a kayak, and the additional 15 metal frags, 200 wood and metal blade to construct a paddle, you can cheaply travel the ocean whenever you like from wherever you like with a kayak. The great thing about the kayak is that it doesn't require any low grade fuel. However, when farming the junk piles on sea, you will come across oil barrels, which should supply you with enough fuel to travel the ocean without running out. When travelling the ocean, you can also bring some diving equipment. It's recommended to get the entire set, but you can make do with just a diving tank. This will allow you to dive down and loot shipwrecks. You can find these shipwrecks underneath bobbin bottles. These shipwrecks will contain a various number of small and large sunken crates. 
and the small crates will always contain fire scrap and some very basic components as seen on screen. In addition, these crates can contain some basic items, clothes, ammo and tools. There is also a 3% chance to either get a targeting computer or a CTV camera, which gives a small crate a scrap worth between 5 and 82, depending on how lucky you are. A larger crate is much better, containing 10 scrap, components and tier 1 workbench items, which includes guns, clothes and basic raiding equipment. The large box has a range of roughly 10 to 84 scrap. Farming the ocean is a great way to safely gather scrap and items, even if it's not as quick as other methods. Your chances of dying are greatly reduced due to the low traffic of players. This method is best used in combination with a boat base. This is a base built on a beach with a compartment to house boats. This will then stop them from despawning or getting stolen, allowing you to constantly launch scrap gathering operations with the same boat. A higher risk but higher reward strategy is to loot monuments. Scrap yield is greatly dependent on the monument you choose to loot, with better monuments usually containing more players, more risk and more items required to complete puzzles. Launch site is the undisputed best monument for scrap yield, however it is a very popular PvP location and requires a hazmat suit, fuse and both green and red cards to do the puzzles. Other high yielding monuments and my personal favourites include military tunnels, sewer branch and airfield. This is not to say other monuments aren't great. It's all up to personal preference and what happens to be within reach from your base. However, you should always make sure to base near or next to monuments that you want to explore. Within monuments, you can find the typical brown crates but also green military crates. A military crate will always contain 8 scrap and some advanced components as well as tier 2 items. A military crate has a scrap worth of between 23 and 164 depending on how lucky you are. Elite crates can be found at Strictly Launch Site, Military Tunnels or the Oil Rig. An elite crate will always include 25 scrap and, in the best scenario, can yield up to 465 scrap in worth of items. Looting monuments is a very risky scrap gathering strategy and a complete safe method is to establish some sort of scrap farm. This works by selling either corn, cloth, trout or fertilizer at a bandit camp. Cloth and trout are the most profitable of these two operations and a combination of both can be used to great effect. Construction of a hemp farm will require access to fresh water and some electricity to build an effective and efficient farm. The scrap yield of this farm is totally dependent on how big you build it and the strain of hemp you decide to grow. New strains of hemp can be developed through selective breeding to impact growth speeds and yields. The biggest risk with this strategy comes with transporting the hemp from your base to the bandit camp. Therefore, a helicopter might be the best investment. 80 cloth can be sold for 10 scrap. A cheaper and simpler farm to use is a trout farm. This requires fishing traps to be built along the coast and supplied with bait. Six pickles can be brought from the bandit camp for one singular scrap and works well for cheap and effective bait. One trout can be sold for five scrap. As previously discussed, we can sell trout and cloth at the bandit trader, but we can also sell six crude oil for one scrap, 20 metal frags for one scrap, one HUM for two scrap, one green card for 15 scrap, one blue card for 40 scrap, and one red card for 80 scrap. These are all good deals, and if you have an abundance of one resource, it is worth selling. For example, always make sure to sell all your HQM just before a map wipe as this can generate thousands of scrap which can be used to learn more BPs for the next wipe. Another great and easy way to generate scrap is to set up vendor machines selling items for scrap. Selling guns and raiding equipment for a couple hundred scrap can be a great way to generate scrap when offline. Another risky strategy is just to gamble it all away like a degenerate. It's not a good tactic and you will eventually lose, however you can turn a quick profit if you're lucky. Always make sure to use your scrap effectively. For example, do not tech tree for a bullet if you already have a gun BP, as you can craft said gun and then unload it to get the bullet to research. I just want to say thank you to all those who have been supporting me recently with these guides, and if you have any feedback or suggestions, please comment them down below.